here I'll be painting with brusho. These are loose watercolor pigments, little pigment crystals, and let's see what I can do with them. I got introduced to brusho by my friend Diane. The pigments I'll be using in this video actually belong to her. She let me borrow them for my experiment. I tried brusho on some cheaper paper first. It's applied two ways. You can apply it on dry paper and then spritz it with water or you can add them to a wet surface. You see a couple of examples here. I did less crystals and less water. That's the one on the left. The little splotches of color don't quite connect. So you get kind of like confetti effect. And on the right hand side, I did a lot more spraying. I also added some pigment to wet paper. So it all mixed and blended together. And I also tried to add some metallic paint, which looked pretty interesting. Brush comes in metallic colors as well. My initial idea was to paint this branch. I thought the background was interesting and I was hoping Brasho will help me show that sunlit foliage in the distance and also those specks of light that we see in the photo. I decided that I don't want white spaces between the flecks, between the little puddles of color, so I painted a very light watercolor background first. I thought I will only add Brasho for texture. After the background dried, I also painted the branch itself, also fairly lightly without the darks. I put my gloves on next because after my first experiment with brusho, I ended up with blue nails and I started sprinkling colors on paper. Brusho colors are super intense, so the main problem with using it is to control the amount that you put on paper. I used a rubber bottle to blow away most of the pigment in the places where too much came out of the little squeeze bottle. I also used several different colors, some green, some yellow, some cerulean blue, hoping to get some nice mixtures, some nice passages in the background. I could barely see the specks of paint on my paper, but when I started spraying it from my spray bottle, the color activated and I saw that it was concentrated in some areas a lot more than in others. I saw a tip online after I was doing research after painting this that it's a good idea to sprinkle those pigments on just a sheet of scrap paper and then shake them over your painting. So brusho definitely takes some getting used to and requires certain skill to develop the control over where it goes and how much of it is necessary to get the effect that you want. Brusho can also be moved around with a regular watercolor brush because all it is is watercolor pigment without the binder, without the gum arabic. Because my background turned out so dark, I decided to add some more color to my branch. So you see me painting the dark passages in the branch. I also painted a darker shape in the bottom left because I thought that will unite the center and the upper portion of my painting and balance it out because now my middle was very dark. I needed some balancing in the painting. It is possible to lift brusho with a paper towel. So in the areas where I got too much pigment, I picked it up. I kind of felt sorry wasting all that pigment, but it had to be picked up because if you put too much, it just creates a dark blob on your paper and it just doesn't work, especially for higher chroma, lighter kind of watercolor. Working with brusho requires a lot of water to activate those crystals and to make them float and mix. I think one of the problems I had when I just first sprayed it was not enough water. I have a little spray bottle and the spray is very fine. When I started adding more water, pigment finally started running and mixing together. I also tried adding some white, there are white pigment crystals in brusho, but they sink into the darker pigments and basically they made very little difference. I could not see them. I wanted to show those light specks so I sprinkled some opaque ink on my painting. I thought it started to look a little bit better but the branch my focal point was still a problem. It looked out of place and it kind of blended with the background too much. I try lightening it with some ink as well. I painted those lighter leaves that we see on the tips with some inks and some with regular watercolors, but it wasn't an improvement. It still didn't work. What I did, I rubbed out the branch 
and let everything dry completely. I just set that painting aside. First of all, to look at it when it's completely dry and also to give myself a break from it. I was pretty tired by then and kind of decide if I should toss it and write it off as just, you know, a learning stage or if I should keep working on it and use it for something. After the painting dried and I looked at it, I really liked how the background looked. The brush did give me those beautiful passages that really watercolory transitions that would be not impossible but hard to achieve with regular watercolor. But the corner where I was trying to paint that branch was honestly a disaster. I happened to see this photo of a lonely dandelion in a field and I thought, you know, those white specks of ink that I sprinkled kind of look like those little dandelion seeds that we see flying around sometimes in summer. So I thought, well, maybe I can paint a dandelion and actually make this work. First, I turned the painting upside down because I needed that dandelion fluff to go upwards. I needed a really opaque white to work on this, so I switched to Artist Gouache Titanium White. It also can be dry brushed, so I can really get the texture of the dandelion. I have a dandelion tutorial here on the channel. I will leave you the link in the description if you're interested. It's also painted with white gouache to finish my painting and avoid <laughs> wasting a sheet of watercolor paper, which we all hate. I painted a dandelion with white gouache and watercolor. I did tone down some of those white specks of ink with lemon yellow. Very easy to apply another layer of transparent watercolor on top of white if you need toning it down. I wanted my dandelion to stand out. That's my focal point. So I had to tone down that white around it just a little bit and I think it looked actually a lot better. It looked like sunshine on the grass. Also a few brush strokes with a liner brush to hint at the grasses so the dandelion doesn't just hang in space. It has some base. It's growing out of a field of grass. So to summarize, I would say brush is a lot of fun. You have to work on it in a dedicated space. No drafts, no sneezing, no pets, you know, that can get into it because once you start working with it it kind of goes everywhere and you don't see it but if water gets on it it will activate and you will have splotches of color all over the place it's a lot of fun it's great for backgrounds especially if you like working with inks or markers i can see a drawing or painting something on top of it can get really striking results but for me i think i'll stick to watercolors that have some binder in them that i know how to control and um, that give me a little bit more predictable results let me know in comments if you've ever tried brush or if you plan on trying it what your experience has been thank you so much for watching this experimentation video and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamarup Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!